Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, the time is now 10.02, and I'd like to hereby call the meeting to order today to say, again, good morning, welcome to the public, social equity applicants, our council members, uh, to our meeting today as we look to review the applications and pursuit to build you know, opportunities for community. And at this time, I'd like to take roll call. Um, Andrea Comer. Here. Corey Betts. Present. Avery Gaddis. Here. Sabera Gordon. Sabera, you're on mute. Here, sorry, uh, that took a block of unexpected. Michael Jefferson. Present. Ojalo Anaim. Mark Palka. Morning, sir. Present. Good morning. Julianne Avalon. Present. Kevin Walton. Present. Edwin Shirley. Present. Kelly Marie Valeris. Present. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to do the approval for the January 11th, 2023 meeting minutes. Uh, may I have a motion to approve and accept the January 11th, 2023 meeting minutes? No move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, Aye. Aye. any opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries. Minutes have been approved and accepted. Uh, we may now turn to the approval for the January 24th, 2023 special meeting minutes. I may have an a motion to approve and accept the January 24th, 2023 special meeting minutes. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries and the minutes have been approved and accepted. Uh, we'll now look to executive session on pending litigation. So at this time, uh, we'll enter into executive session to discuss pending we'll litigation. A motion. Apologies. Councilman Jefferson noted that we need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, I'd like to uh, call a motion to move to executive session. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, let's see, the meeting members have received a Teams link for the executive session and members should remain on this Zoom meeting. Uh, while in the executive session, the Zoom meeting will be muted. Uh, please open your Teams link for the executive session and for the members of the public, we will return shortly and we thank you for your patience and uh, we'll return then. attendance. We've returned from executive session and I will once again take attendance just to ensure that we have a quorum. Uh, Andrea Comer. Here. Corey Betts. Avery Gaddis. Here. Sabera Gordon. Here. Michael Jefferson. Here. Ojala Onim. Here. Mark Palka. Julianne Avalon. Present. Kevin Walton. Present. Ed Shirley. Here. Uh, Kelly Marie Valeris. Present. Uh, Kamala, do we have a quorum? I admit, I would admit we do. Yes, Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Great, thank you, just confirming. Uh, next on the agenda, we'll hear from recommendations from Cone Resnick on applications for workforce development plans. And joining us today is Serona uh, Satisrona. Thank you. Good morning, members of the council. Today, we have three workforce development plans for recommendation. We have application number ACME 0008473 for MCEJV LLC, and that is recommended for approval. 
we have ACRE 0015647 for FFDW EJV LLC, and that is recommended for approval. And we have ACRE 0015644 for BUDR Hartford Holding LLC, and that is recommended for denial. And that concludes all of the workforce development plans we have this uh, for this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. So may I hear a motion to accept the recommendation to approve workforce development plan application uh, number ACME00. 8473 submitted by MCEJV LLC and ACRE 001 submitted FFDWEJV LLC. So move. Any discussion? Yeah. Discussion? Yeah, in light of our previous discussion, can you just give us in, in bullets the criteria you looked at? to approve this workforce development plan? Sarone? So, sure. Um, if you give me a second, I can open up the, the spreadsheet, but it is the criteria that was set forth by the council. Um, and we follow exactly uh, the rubric that was sent to us that, uh, that was supposed to be used for uh, reviewing these workforce development plans. Um, if you would like for me to go through the exact criteria, I can do so. Just give me one second. I don't have it pulled up. Uh, I just need to get that. Um, while she's doing that, I just wanted to reiterate that this was um, a process in which we looked at and the council did approve the scoring criteria and the criteria for the plan. They're very closely aligned. And the decision was made that if they receive a 70 or above, their plan would be approved. If they received less than a 70, then they would go back and have to make modifications to their plan to get it up to that 70 or higher. Um, I'll take this moment and opportunity to let you know that the uh, position for the workforce development coordinator has been posted. Um, I believe it'll be up through the end of this week. So if you know of anyone who's interested, please have them go to the state website and take a look at it. And once this person is up and running, they'll get much more involved in uh, working with these companies on their plans and implementation. Thank you. Councilwoman Gordon, your uh, comment. Uh, yes, uh, one um, really quick thing. Um, Councilman Betts is stuck in the waiting room and can't get in. The other, I just had a quick question on um, the denial. Once, is it the situation where if they're denied, because I know we're only voting on the approvals, I just want to get, get a little bit of clarity. Do they resubmit the workforce development plan or are they just halted from moving forward with a denied um, workforce development plan? I wasn't sure. Uh, Councilmember Gordon, so under the current rule, if the workforce development plan is rejected or denied, uh, they get to resubmit an updated plan uh, for the council to review. Uh, in this particular case, the reason why it's being denied, which is usually uh, pretty rare, is because the plan was incomplete. Uh, they mistakenly uploaded only a couple of pages uh, instead of the full plan. And ever since we've been in contact with them to make sure that they resubmit the full plan for the council to be able to make an appropriate determination. Through you, Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll withdraw my request if it's gonna if it's time consuming. But here's the thing: if if Councilwoman Valerius has just shared with us that there's a point system involved in this, I like to know if a person got a seventy versus the person who got a hundred. If the person got a seventy, we have questions about that plan. So I withdraw my request um, for Serona to give us that. If you can send that to us, I I, I want to review it again. Now that I know that there's a a point system involved in this. I mean, because some people can just be getting by and that's gonna raise some concerns. Yeah. 
Council Member Jefferson. So the checklist that we sent uh, as part of the meeting material have the score at the bottom of it okay. for each of the app, uh, workforce development okay. plan. So okay. you can see the score, all members of the council can see the score that these plans uh, have received. And I will thank you. even say, no problem. Well, thank you then with the, that, uh, was there anything else Rona, in addition? And uh, no, no, that's all we have. Uh, however, I do have the criteria pulled up right now and I can share my screen if, if you still would like to see it. I don't have a problem doing that. No problem. No, that's okay. I withdraw. Right. Okay. Well, Thank well that, so then that mind moving forward, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The motion carries and the workforce plan submitted respectively uh, hereby approved. I would also now like to hear a motion to accept the recommendation to reject the workforce plan application number ACRE 0015644 submitted by Butter BUDR Hartford Holding LLC for an incomplete submission. So mm. moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Well, the motion carries and the workforce plan submitted by Butter Hartford Holding LLC is hereby rejected. And the applicant is invited to resubmit a more complete workforce plan if not already done and to work with the SEC staff for the guidance. Uh, next, we have the vote on social, the social equity plan and I will turn this over to uh, Kamala Mantrivi. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. So FFDW EJV LLC, which is a subsidiary of Anfero, submitted a social equity plan for their retail establishment in Manchester. And after review, we recommend that the council approve the plan uh, submitted and our office will continue to reach out to the approved business to help them improve this social equity plan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the plan as submitted by Attorney Matrivi. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion carries and the social equity plan submitted respectively by FFDW EJV LLC is hereby approved. Uh, and now we will turn over to our discussion of legislation uh, proposals. Uh, Christina Diamond, if you would. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to touch upon a few highlights from the legislative updates that I've previously sent to all of you. Um, the General Law Committee raised the Social Equity Council's bill as a concept during their meeting on January 17th. A raised committee bill has not been introduced yet, so no bill number at this time. Um, cannabis bills may be up for a public hearing as soon as next week, and we will certainly notify you when we learn of a hearing date for those bills. We anticipate testifying on a few bills this session. We will testify in support of our legislative proposals. And just so you know, our proposals have been posted on OPM's website. SCC staff recommends testifying in opposition to House Bill 203 and, excuse me, Senate Bill 203 and Senate Bill 403. These bills would allow hemp farmers to cultivate recreational cannabis. And there are a couple of bills that this session that address changes to the lottery process. House Bill 5432 establishes a graduated schedule of cannabis application fees and House Bill 5730 would allow an individual or business to file only one application in the lottery. And SEC staff recommends the council support the lottery process being more equitable, and we will continue to engage in conversations on how to best um, go about doing that. 
And then of course, any we would testify on any appropriation budget hearings as necessary. And any official SEC testimony will be provided by Ginny and Paul. We will send you a copy of the testimony prior to the public hearing. And I'll, I'll just close by saying I welcome any one-on-one -on -one conversations with council members and please reach out to me so that I can hear your perspective on um, any of the uh, legislation. Great, thank you. Um, uh, any comments, questions? Uh, Councilwoman Comer. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Christina, for that. I have a couple of questions. One is, um, I know I read that there was the potential of legislation regarding an ombudsman, and just wondering if you have any information on the status of that. Um, yes, so we did have a conversation um, with Representative uh, Rojas, and he had said that um, the original intent of the bill was to um, propose a ombudsman for um, DCP in dealing with the medical um, patients. So it wasn't um, in regards to um, social equity or being with um, DECD. Okay, thank you. And then the second question is, I know you said that the Test, any testimony would be provided by um, Chairman Robertson and Director Clay, um, but to the extent that there are, and I am not one of them, by the way, there are council members who would like to testify, will there be assistance with developing testimony language or is there a reason why the testimony is only, is being limited to the chair and the director? Um, great question. So the official SEC testimony would be from the chair and the executive director, but um, council members should feel free to um, submit legislation or test, uh, excuse me, testimony um, on their own behalf. I can certainly help um, prepare that testimony. For example, I've sent um, talking points for Senate Bill 203 and Senate Bill 403, so I can certainly do that on other bills if council members are interested in testifying. And we will absolutely, like when the public hearing comes up, let people know, give advance notice, so everyone will be, you know, up to date and know what is going on. Councilwoman, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, is that something we really want to do, allow council members to testify you have 15 different opinions they've not been approved we have not been vetted i i'm not too sure that's something we want to do maybe i'm missing something here but i would i would prefer that it, it comes from staff that it comes from our executive director someone tell me i'm wrong because i i don't i don't see why if, if council members have a point to make we can just call up our executive director and but we need some consensus on this we can't go before uh, these committees and just talk about our opinions and whatnot without even having any clarification, without being properly vetted in terms of the statements we want to make, the, the, the policy moves we want to make. I have a concern with that. Make a good point, Councilman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Valeris. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, I just had a question. You mentioned the one of the bills was to open up uh, the opportunity for hemp farmers to cultivate um, cannabis and sell it in the in the cannabis market. Could you please explain to to us how that would affect the licensing process and the lottery process and the social equity component of what the council is trying to oversee if we just open up the market to any hemp farmer who now has an open license for cannabis that was not going through the SEC process. Yeah, so I had sent um, some talking points last evening to everybody addressing this issue. And I think the concerns are um, right now there are currently um, 78 hemp growers that are licensed by the Department of Agriculture. And um, that number will certainly sure to increase if the hemp farmers are allowed to cultivate recreational cannabis. 
And we're concerned with oversupply issues um, and the result in diminished retail pricing. And um, from our perspective, we believe that this effort, you know, could certainly undermine the intent of the entire cannabis bill. I mean, social equity was the cornerstone of the cannabis legislation, and we want to um, preserve the intent of the law and to continue to make sure that the cannabis, cannabis market is equitable. Thank you for that. I'm wondering how can a bill be put in place that undermines the whole underpinning of the Social Equity Council and the original intent of opening up the medical or the uh, recreational cannabis industry? Like, it just seems to me like it's just circumventing the entire process. And it sounds to me like it's a pretty big deal that not only should the Social Equity Council have a strong opinion on, but the public in general, especially those who um, are being served by the uh, cannabis bill and its its intent for social equity. So, so thank you for the moment. I just wanted to make sure that that was on public record and, and everyone really understood the um, gravity, I guess, of this bill and what it could do to the market. Thank you, Councilwoman Valeris. Uh, Councilwoman Gordon. Hi, um, I just had a quick question about the legislation. So the bills that the SB, like, I guess for lack of a better term, the, the SEC supported legislation, is that being proposed by a specific legislator or is it just going through the chairs of the general law committee? I, it is my understanding that our um, SEC proposals that we put forth will be submitted um, on as a raised bill in the general law committee. Okay, and then is the SEC staff working with any like legislators in particular to get the bills through? I, you know, you can put it in, the committee can say yes, and then somehow with the hundreds of bills that go through the process, it ends up just not being a priority. I guess that was my first question. And doubly, our other question is, what's the role of the, the governor's office or like the executive branch in getting SEC sponsored bills through the legislative process? Are we on our own or do they help us? And by us, I mean, I totally agree with Councilman Jefferson, us meaning the staff and the chair. I can't, um, I, I don't want to speak to the um, governor's office, their their role in all of this, but I can say that I have been meeting with general law leadership and will continue to meet with um, the entire general law committee in helping to move our legislative proposals forward. And we're just really, honestly, at the beginning, as you know, at the beginning stages right now of the session, so... Thank you for that. I was just thinking that as a we're you know we're situated within DECD and um, we have a lot of executive branch appointments. It might just be helpful to figure out like how what the role is of the executive branch as we go through the or at least the liaisons or so you're not I don't you know it's a lot so just and I I think it's I don't I don't I don't think it's appropriate for those of us on the council necessarily to do what you're doing, but I was just thinking of like scaffolding and support from everybody who could be pop, who could be helpful in this process. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councilwoman Gordon. Uh, Councilman Jefferson. Yeah, I just want to support what uh, Councilwoman Valeri's uh, mentioned. I think she makes an excellent point about this, these hemp farmers and, and the notion that they can circumvent everything we put in place. In addition to that, from a social equity standpoint, how many, uh, uh, hemp farmers of color are there? I mean, that's 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 something I, I would be curious to know. Just a question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman Jefferson. Uh, any other comments? Well, at this time, well, let's say I'd, I'd like to say something on behalf of this. Now, Mr. Chair, my hand was raised, Kevin. Oh, Lincoln. I'm sorry, I did not see you. Yeah. Apologies, Councilman. No worries. Martin. No worries, right thank you. No, I, I too uh, shared 
Councilwoman Valeri's uh, concern. My also the other concern too, and kind of doing some research is the concern for over uh, overproducing product and, and what happens if we allow this to happen and anyone to start growing. And then we become one of those states where like Oklahoma and other states who just have an overabundance of product and what do you do with that? But I do want to re iterate that, do consider that, share that concern of Councilwoman Valeri in terms of um, staying true to this process. Great, thank you, Councilwoman uh, Walton. Uh, Councilwoman Comer. Thank you, and I'll be brief. And I, I just to sort of revisit what I was stating that was exactly for that purpose, right? Because there is strength in numbers, right? And so not necessarily to have council members kind of go rogue, but to elevate the voices and particularly in recognition of the fact that, you know, legislative leadership has been or have appointed many of these members. So to the extent that there is some influence that can be provided, that was the reason for, for asking the question about um, voices beyond just the chair. This was certainly not an attempt to sort of make things messy and chaotic. Thank you. No, thank you and, and acknowledged. Uh, I just want to make sure I haven't missed anyone else. Uh, might I suggest, um, based on what um, Councilwoman Comer just said, that perhaps if um, individual um, members are interested in testifying, that they submit their testimony to SEC staff and the chair to make sure that it is vetted um, and so that we are all speaking in one voice. Right, very appreciated, thank you. Um, and, and at this time, you know, from my perspective, which is, you know, the Social Equity Council was created to promote equity and diversity and inclusion for the Connecticut citizens who've been disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs. And you know this legislative proposal to introduce hemp into adult use cannabis industry it will be harmful to recently licensed social equity applicants, you know who are struggling financially to stand up their business. So I think it's important for the social equity council to protect the legacy of responsible and equitable regulation of the adult use and cannabis act or RERAC, uh, which to uplift poor communities devastated by the war on drugs and on poverty. And so therefore. As chair, you know, I'd call on the yes, uh, SEC uh, and its applicants and legislature to oppose these bills. Um, so just a statement. Uh, and from that, I'd like to go to our executive director's report. Good morning, everyone. Um, I can see. Can everyone see the report? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Next slide, please. So welcome to February. February is going to be an extremely busy month for the Social Equity Council staff. Um, although we are short staffed, we are, full, we are full steam ahead in assisting approved social equity applicants complete their final steps toward licensure and committed to finalizing the low interest loan program called the Canada Business Revolving Loan Fund or loan program. Um, we expect the first fully licensed social equity cannabis business to open this month. So today I'll just briefly speak about the SEC staffing program updates. We already gone over the legislative update, so I'm gonna skip that. And then our focus for February. So we uh, continue to work with the Department of Administrative Services to fill five important social equity council office positions. All requests for information to post these positions have been submitted to the Department of Administrative Services. And I also just wanted to um, point out that the position for cannabis coordinator in the Office of Workforce Strategy, that position was forwarded to all members of the council. So again, if you could please share that with people that you know that might be interested, um, that posting would be very helpful. The positions that the Social Equity, uh, Office of the Social Equity Council are looking to fill is one is called a CD assistant administrator, a paralegal, a program manager for reinvestment, a program manager for outreach, and to refill the administrative assistant position vacated by uh, Crystal Morris a couple of weeks ago. So program updates. We have the accelerator program um, started January 16th. That program is scheduled to end in September. 
Um, we're checking in with the participants and they have reported that they are learning a great deal and they're making very, very good progress in understanding and learning more uh, about the history of cannabis, the industry, standing up their businesses. I did receive um, a letter from one of the participants and I will forward that letter out to the council and I will forward it because it's a part of another email, but she does make um, some, she compliments the program and lets us know that she is doing well and she appreciates the opportunity to participate in the accelerator program. As I just mentioned, the Cannabis Revolving Loan Fund program, we are finalizing some details with the uh, AG. This is probably one of the first programs that two organizations, two agencies have worked together on. So this is a joint program with the Social Equity Council and the Department of Economic and Community Development. So we are finalizing the details, some legal matters, and we have webinars um, and information sessions planned um, as soon as those details are um, hammered out. And we will also be going back to the Bond Commission um, in as soon as possible for additional funding based on some feedback we got that um, a lot of folks may be coming to borrow money from this fund. Um, information on the community reinvestment. So last month, an ad hoc committee uh, for reinvestment was established. Uh, member Ojala Naim has been appointed as chair and we will begin meeting and discussions on reinvestment strategy um, immediately. So once the committee has been uh, fully identified and then mentioned in the workforce development area, uh, we continue to work with the Office of Workforce Strategy. As I mentioned, the position was posted on January 31st um, and we continue to look at and address legal, uh, federal legal um, restrictions as it relates to workforce development and some issues with federal funding being involved with um, cannabis industry that is not federally legal. And uh, again, Christina just went over the legislative session. These are some of the bills that are being tracked. Um, just to note the governor, um, Governor Lamont is scheduled to deliver his annual budget address tomorrow on February 8th. Uh, we had some discussion of social equity plans. So, uh, we consider the social equity plans to be a work in progress, like the workforce development plans. Um, social equity council staff will be reviewing social equity plans submitted by social equity applicants. We have a uh, 10 point uh, checklist criteria that we will be reviewing the plans against. Uh, we'll work with the cannabis businesses to tweak the plans that are submitted. And we will also be reaching out and providing technical assistance to the uh, companies that are ready to submit their plans. Um, each business is required to provide a six month progress update to the council, as well as an annual report as a condition of their license renewal. So we will be tracking these plans and monitoring them very closely, um, in particularly in the first year as they are a work in progress and they continue to be developed. So our focus for February, we will be um, reviewing, again, social equity plans, providing technical assistance for the development of social equity plans. We are working on our reinvestment strategy, so we'll have discussions around that, uh, finalizing the loan play program, engaging in the legislative session, continuing to uh, review workforce development plans and post vacant social equity council uh, positions. And that is my report. If anyone has any questions, and just as an FYI, I did uh, send this report to members of the council, so you do have it in your email. Thank you, Director Clay. Are there any questions regarding the director's report? One question. Councilman Jefferson, go right ahead. Yeah, thank you to you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Madam E.D., uh, who exactly um, on your staff is reviewing these uh, the social equity plans. And I, I don't mean to put anyone on the spot, but I just want to make sure that we're clear about it. And it's the position is properly funded. That's a very, very important role yes, it on is. your staff. So do we have uh, several people doing it? One person doing it? Do there, plan it? Yeah, so for this particular plan, the first plan that was uh, that we reviewed, um, Attorney Matravi and I reviewed the plan. Okay. And I will continue to review plans. I mean, these plans are, are very serious to me. 
Um, I do have, in um, case you don't know, a very extensive background in racial equity and inclusion and diversity. Um, I serve on many boards and commissions related to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, I serve on the ACLU board. I serve on local boards in my town, uh, former president of the NAACP in Greater Waterbury. And so these plans are, they mean a lot to me and I know they mean a lot to the council. So we will continue to really look at them with a very, very keen eye. Thank you. Uh, are there any other, uh, uh, Councilwoman Valeris? I just quickly want to thank uh, Ginny Ray and um, Attorney Mitrivi um, for their work on this. I know that there's there's a, a heavy lift here and, and it is a very important part of the work that we're doing. And I just wanted to extend my appreciation to them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, any other comments? Director Clay, if you could stop sharing, I could probably yeah. see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say that's, that's, we're done. <laughs> Wonderful to share, Thank but you. I can't see. <laughs> Thanks. Always good to have a little levity. Uh, now on to our committee reports, and we're going to talk uh, hear from our reinvestment ad hoc committee. And as mentioned before, our exec by our executive director, uh, that will be Ojalan uh, Naim as chair, and also introducing Avery Gaddis as co-chair for the reinvestment committee. So, Madam Chair, would you like to address the public? Sure, thank you. Um, so we've uh, established this at our, our last meeting, and we are working to get a meeting on the calendar um, for, if not late next week, early the week after. Um, our goal is to uh, define and redefine the plan um, for uh, reinvestment and come back to the council with a proposal um, in terms of the funds that we are looking to request for this fiscal year and the next fiscal year. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, comments or questions? Uh, Councilman Gaddis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, uh, personally, I have this little test with my nine-year-old daughter called You Can Hang Out With That Person test. And Ojala, Councilwoman Naeem, she is a very dynamic woman. She is a rock star along with Councilwoman Comer, Councilwoman Gordon, Councilwoman Marie Valeris. And having a daughter changes your perspective on how society treats women. And I am so honored and excited to serve on a council with such dynamic women. And I'm looking forward to working alongside Ojala to, to bring forward a good, acceptable work product. So thank you for having faith in us. And I look forward to not letting you guys down. Truly appreciate it, Councilman Geddes. Uh, any other comments? I think we have a pretty good male uh, uh, team here as well. So thank you for the comments. Uh, let's now move on to, uh, good morning, Chairwoman Comer. Do we have reports, recommendations from the Finance Committee? Yes, thank you. Um, uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the Finance Committee meeting, um, actually, I guess I should back up, um, with the departure of Councilwoman Shaw um, and my return, I have also returned as Chair of the Finance Committee, um, wanted to just test base on two things. One is that we... Previously, the Finance Committee was meeting quarterly. Um, I have asked the Executive Director if we could move that to bi-monthly. And that's particularly because of the, um, the conversations that have been had around community reinvestment. And I know last month we had a very robust conversation um, around the absence of funds. And there were some questions from council members about how that might work. Um, and I, in terms of the, the how, that will be determined by the um, reinvestment ad hoc committee. But I did want to just share with this council because the question had come up around wanting to be able to get some resources to the community, um, irrespective of FY24-25 for fiscal year 23, which is this year that ends as of in June, um, we have about $6.1 million in the community reinvestment and workforce development line that has as, as of yet been untouched. So my, my supposition is that um, as we develop our plan for reinvestment to release those funds for FY24 and 25, 
demonstrating that we have taken some action to use the resources currently available to us will help with that goal. So um, I look forward to our next uh, finance committee meeting to sort of talk that through and also to hearing um, from the reinvestment committee on um, suggested plans to, to utilize both what's available now and what we hope to acquire going forward. Um, I believe that meeting will be scheduled for either the 14th or the 28th. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Comer and welcome back. I'm as well as the rest of the teams, very happy to have you back here and, and guiding us through the, the finance maze. Uh, Councilman Jefferson, you have a question. No, I, I just want to echo the sentiments uh, of uh, Councilwoman um, Comer. Uh, we, we do have about $6 million in that fund. And I, I hope it's used to build the framework, but also to give back immediately within the next six months, something back to the disproportionately impacted um, communities. I mean, why, why are we sitting around holding that money? That money should go back to these communities that's been disproportionately impacted by the war on drugs. That's what we're about. And I hope and I trust that the reinvestment committee and I, and I, and I will take that into strong consideration when we're talking about this. I mean, this is very, very, I, I need to finish this thought, Mr. Chair, and it's through you. I, you know, this is a very important aspect of our mission to give back. And I don't think we should do that in a cheap way because the war on drugs wasn't uh, levied upon our community in a cheap way. They came strong and they came hard and a lot of lives, uh, a lot of people paid for it, you know, and, uh, and, and our communities paid for it. So when we talk about community reinvestment, we're taking it up a notch. I certainly will. I just need you to understand that. There'll be very little compromise on how we give this money back. I mean, the money has to go back to our community. That's just the bottom line. Thanks. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Councilman Jefferson. Yeah, I just wanted to, yes, again, thank, thank you, Councilman Jefferson, for that. And I, I share your commitment to making sure that these resources are, are provided to the communities that have been most impacted and most need, most need them. Um, but I also want to make sure that we are, A, not doing the same thing, expecting a different result, because that's the definition of insanity, and B, from the very start, we committed to talking with these communities about what that reinvestment looks like, and I want to honor um, that commitment. But I also recognize the urgency involved in not wanting to, like, it, as has been said many times, let perfection be the enemy of, or of the good. We, we concur, and I, I just don't mean to belabor it, I, I concur with what your, your, your sentiments are in, in, in terms of taking our time so it's done appropriately, but part of that should be indexing the communities that are that are worse off. I mean, we, we have the data, we have the maps, we, we should consider indexing it. I mean, we, you know, you know sometimes we like to, um, we, we're generous, overly generous, and the communities that, that need it the most are, 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 are basically, you know, forgotten or not, you know, awarded in the way they should be. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Gordon. Um, yeah, sorry, I feel like I thought I'm talking a lot today. I just wanted to double down on what was said. Also, additionally, one of the things I'm trying to figure out is where the synergy is with the outreach committee and, and the community reinvestment committee. I do know that my co-chair is no longer on the council, but the, from the outreach committee perspective, um, to your point, um, Councilman Jefferson, we are ready to be able to go out to the community and listen to the needs, which I think, I don't think everyone needs to do everything, but I do think there's a way for us to divvy up some of the work and um, we'd be happy to talk. And it, it shouldn't just be the outreach committee. So I don't wanna say it um, to make it seem like we, we're monopolizing that piece mm -hmm. of it, but maybe uh, the, the outreach committee and some of the other members, we could start to do town halls in the short term, right? To be able to listen to the community and get, so we can get the ball rolling here while we're figuring out the other piece of it from the, like how we're, get, like how we're gonna use the community reinvestment dollars. I think it would be really, really important for us to get 
I get on the road and do a road show for lack of a better term, but listening to the community and hearing what they want, which will help to inform the community reinvestment committee, which I know is just getting started. So I think I'm happy to, um, we're, I'm not sure if we're having a meeting on Friday. We might be having a meeting on Friday, but I'm happy for us to start that process and start to listen to the community, at least so we can provide some feedback to the community reinvestment committee. So we're not flying by. I think we have lots of ideas about what we should be doing, but I really think we need to be connected to the community and listening to them to be able to inform what we're going to be doing moving forward. Just wanted to put that out there that I, I think it's in the works. We're not, so we are planning on doing that. Chairman, if I may respond through you. Yes, please. Um, I, I think you're spot on that that's sort of step one in, in what I've sort of envisioned. I would like to get the um, reinvestment committee together so that they are in agreement uh, and bring that forward. But, you know, we, we have an outreach committee for a reason. Um, as Councilman Kaur said, it's critical that we hear from the community what the needs are, um, while also doing an analysis and evaluation of what Councilman Jefferson said, what are the areas, what's the data that we know, and then additionally, where is their funding also going already, right? So we know that there are a lot of um, other initiatives within the state and through, through the state um, that are funding things. Let's just make sure we're not recreating the wheel and really addressing those things that are not being touched, um, as I think was the, the point of uh, Councilman Jefferson. So um, I, I am in alignment with you. Um, I'm, I'm hoping you will also um, engage on the reinvestment committee because I would love to have your voice there at the table, but also have it as a way to reconnect with the outreach committee. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. Uh, are there any further questions? Uh, thank you again. Uh, I think Councilman uh, Walton has his hand up. Yeah. Oh, I did not I'm see. I'm sorry. You. I don't know what, what it is, Brother Chair. I don't know if it's I the think brown you're in the hand corner. throwing you off. <laughs> I don't know if it's the brown hand throwing you off, Mr. Chair. No, no, not at all. Here we are. Um, I think it's where I have my other screen that semi blocks it out. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no worries. I'll be brief. But you're um, I'll be brief. I, I just want to reiterate that I'm in support of uh, Councilman Jefferson and um, Councilman Gordon and Councilman Naeem and, and everyone, right? Sometimes, but sometimes we talk about the war on drugs as if the war on drugs is a thing of the past. And I'm reminded every day as I drive through New Haven that the war on drugs are still wreaking havoc in our communities and our DIAs. So um, I also understand that there are the answer lies in the community. So I, I would hope that we would have the opportunity to go to these communities where there are people doing great work and organizations doing great work that can help us inform our reinvestment strategies. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman Walton. Uh, and thank you, uh, members uh, and Councilwoman Comer for the Finance Committee and your diligent work and, and the work ahead. And I'm sure we'll all participate in that. Uh, next, we're gonna move to, good morning uh, again, Chairwoman Naeem. Do we have a report of recommendations from the Governance Committee? Uh, no report or recommendations. Um, just uh, just a quick update following um, last council meeting. You all will be receiving um, the sort of in overview process uh, in your inboxes um, this afternoon. So please keep an eye out for that um, and, and make sure you fill it out. Great. Thank you. And uh, thank you for that. And our uh, Councilwoman Gordon, anything from the Outreach and Marketing Committee? Nope, I think we're meeting uh, this week and we should have a report for next time, hopefully. Great. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman Shirley. Do you have a report recommendation from the Policy Committee? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no report at this time. We will meet uh, uh, this month and uh, we'll get back to you. Great, thank you. Uh, appreciate it for your work. And good morning or good afternoon, Chairman Valeris. Uh, report or recommendations from the Workforce Development Committee. There are no uh, reports or recommendations at this time. I just do want to reiterate and remind people if you know of people who are interested in the Workforce Development Coordinator position, um, please pass along the job description and have them fill out the application. Great, thank you. Any questions? All right, thank you and the members of the Workforce Development Committee. Uh, and as we come to a close for the good of the order, are any new business updates or information that we may wanna cover? Mr. Chairman, move to adjourn. Can I get a second? Second. Second. Second.
Yeah, I'm sure all in favor. We are adjourned. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you again. Bye. 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 Bye.